What is up everybody? Chris from Team Aquascape. This episode we are going to be starting a 16 by 16 foot pond with a wetland filter and a waterfalls to boot for our feathered friends, the ducks. You guys ready to see what we're doing? All right then. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. So like I said, we are out here and we are going to be putting a 16 by 16 foot pond with a wetland filter on it, as well as a biofalls and a waterfall and stream system that is going to be fit for our aviary friends, ducks. That's right, the customer wants a pond fit for ducks. So we are beefing up the biological filtration on this project and we're gonna be taking over his backyard and creating something absolutely incredible. So here's the canvas that we're working with. This used to be occupied with all cats there was about two feet thick of cattails in through here. DK was out here yesterday, cleaned everything out, got it into a roll-off dumpster that is out in the front of the driveway there. He also dug a few potholes. You can see we are accepting accumulating groundwater here. So we're going to have to take that into consideration and do an underdrain system. Back along this berm, we are going to do a waterfalls. At the base of the waterfall stream system, we are going to be putting a wetland filter in, and then that will transition into the pond. The pond will be 16 by 16 feet. This is way more long and wide than 16 by 16 feet so we're gonna have to do some filling in of this area we've got a bunch of additional topsoil brought out here but before we do that we need to do the infrastructure work and that is putting in an under drain system so you can see we've got some big drain pipe coming out and we are going to be doing an under drain system underneath the entire pond leading us to a sump pit that will end up discharging all of that excess groundwater we don't want any bubbling from hydrostatic pressure or anything to disrupt the functionality or the integrity of our pond so we'll do some work I'm gonna go ahead and set the camera down help these guys get unloaded and start getting the rock stage and then we're gonna go ahead and give you guys a thorough walkthrough of what's happening out on this really cool pond that's going to be fit for our feathered friends So we've got things figured out. We've got a 16 by 16 foot pond running from that point all the way over to that front line there. And then from here over to there. We also have a little intake area back behind Juan, but we're gonna dig this thing down all the way to two feet. We will then dig a series of drain tile lines for subterranean drainage. We'll probably run one main line all the way across over to where our sump pit will be. We're gonna put a piece of ADS pipe running down into the ground. You'll see that later on in the episode. But we'll have one main line and then a bunch of auxiliary lines running across. What that'll do is that will collect any groundwater and collect it in the pipe, get it over to our sump pit so that it's not putting any excess pressure underneath the liner, bubbling that liner up. So we're going to dig all this out, throw all these spoils over into the areas that are necessary. Like in through here, we've got to build up. Back over there, we've got to build up all the way around the pond. Also notice how we didn't bring the pond right up next to the deck. I wanted to pull it away so that when you get back up here on the deck itself, you'll be able to see a large portion of the open body of water. I don't know if you can see the kind of the white lines back and through this whole fence railing system all the way around is gonna come down. But this way, if the pond was coming all the way up to the deck, you would never see it until you were right on top of it. So Dan's gonna get in there and start scratching all this stuff out, start throwing all that stuff off to the sides, and then we'll get our drainage in. This is our drainage trench system. You can see we've got all these little lines running all the way through here. Dan did a fantastic job of getting it leveled out to the depth that we want it to be. Now we're working on just digging our trenches in through here. Our sump pit is going to go back over there. We're going to stand up a piece of ADS pipe. I'll show you what that looks like. But that thing will sit just stubbed up right there and we're going to discharge our drain tile right into that. This is that pipe system. You've seen it on a couple of our videos, but we're going to stand this guy up looks like it's an 18 inch piece this will stand up and will sit vertical in that hole back over there and then our four inch perforated drain tile is going to run through all these little trenches we'll pitch down and gravity will take that water into that sump pit we will drop a sump pump down in there and then we will discharge that hose and we will daylight it over by the storm drain which is where our pipes are located right now so we'll discharge it somewhere out and then just let it shed that way the key to this is making sure that all the elevations are correct everything is 
pitching this way. And then we'll also be putting three quarter inch clean angular limestone, filling all the trenches around just to add for extra infiltration and allow that water to flow freely. All of the drain tile will end up being socked so that we avoid any the perforation and getting clogged up on the drain tile, making it ineffective. So we've got probably about a hundred feet worth of drain tile that we have to put down, series of fittings, that kind of stuff. But we'll show you how that all works as we go through this process. So infrastructure, it's going to pay off later doing all of this, but it will definitely make all the difference in the world once it's done. Thank you. So here is that under drain system. You can see we've got a variety of fingers from this main drain coming down through here. The reason for that is we just wanna make sure that we have all areas of the pond covered as far as being able to accept groundwater. With this heavy clay, what will happen is this water is going to find the path of least resistance. So we wanted to create a lot of paths of least resistance and able to capture everything under the footprint of this pond. So it all funnels into this one four inch drain that will end up discharging into our piece of ADS pipe, which I have cut over there. We cut about a four and a half half inch hole about 12 inches up from the bottom of the pipe and you can see that hole over there I'll show that to you in a second but that's what that pipe is going to discharge into that thing will stand up vertically as a standpipe and then we'll backfill around that with gravel as well before I forget we did end up putting fabric down just to help keep some of the cross contamination between the clay soil and the gravel so we're gonna go ahead and fill these trenches with gravel and then once that is done we'll line this entire thing with heavy-duty rock pad just to give us a nice soft barrier to put that liner on and end up rocking in so we're gonna go ahead and get started throwing this three-quarter clean in that Dan has already in the bucket we've got the skidster over there and we're gonna go ahead and start filling this there's that three-quarter clean really good stuff no fines in there And we'll end up leveling all this out. All this will come into here. And then that's where that big piece of ADS pipe is going to stand straight up and down. So really, really pleased. We're going to get this thing knocked out. And then go ahead and get our underlayment in, then our liner, and then we can start rocking this pot. Here's that hole that we talked about in the ADS pipe. So the four inch tile will end up fitting in to that pipe just like that. And then we'll seal up around the edges just to prevent anything from getting in there and clogging our sump pump that will sit down about four feet below grade. Actually four and a half feet below grade. give you a little bit different of an angle than you got earlier in the video but here's that under drain system it's all installed we've got all that gravel now covering the pipe allowing for great infiltration and then over here is that large piece of ads pipe Let's see if we can get down there and then there is where our four inch pipe daylights into this stand pipe and right now there's a clean out pump in the bottom that's pumping the water that's in here out to the storm sewer but eventually we're going to put a sump pump in here and then run a line below grade over to that area and let it daylight out over there so we're gonna bring in a little bit more gravel just to sturdy this thing up in through here and then we'll end up covering all this with dirt over top of the gravel so there you have it folks there you have it pieces down on the very bottom to just help prevent anything from happening we still have a little bit of that three-quarter trap rock so we just wanted to make that nice and soft now we're going to get our liner in we've got a 25 by 35 epdm liner we've got the liner snake and we're going to go ahead and get that thing in there get it unfolded get it laid out get all the folds out that we can and then go ahead and start rocking the pile we've got a pile of boulders over there and then juan is heading back and he's going to start bringing rocks in over that way All right, liners in. We had a couple extra feet back over here just in case we need to carve some boulders in, so all the way around. And then now we're gonna put down some of this lightweight geotextile underlayment just to give us a little bit more cushion inside the liner. Still need to be careful, but we are in good shape once that goes in. Chris 
Zeshki's day today. Not his birthday, it's just his day. Yep. Just setting some rock. Setting some rock, bud. All right, so here's what we got going. This yes. is Jada Hi. from CE Ponds Outdoor Living Experts out of PA. Oh yeah. That's Pennsylvania for all you non-Pennsylvania <laughs> folks. So Jada, Chris, myself are in here setting rock, kind of rocking in. We had to dig out this big bowl so you can see we've got a lot of gravel for backfill. Dan's up there slinging them and bringing them. Same with Ryan over there. And then we got Keith over there strapping as well. So we're just kind of working our way through. But I wanted to show you some of the rock work and kind of what we talk about when we're stacking with granite. You guys have seen this in some of our other videos, but I really wanted to show the attention to the detail, locking things in to, into place, the joints between the rocks, using some of these little triangle stones to fill void space, that kind of stuff, and also using a variety in scale. So you can see just how diverse the size and the scale of these boulders are. So we've got some big ones up top, then we also have some big ones down below, mixed in with some mediums and then some smalls, just kind of piecing everything together. And of course, you've got river rocks behind, just kind of backfilling, giving us a nice solid base to keep rocking on. Very important to maintain peninsulas when we're doing this. You can see Jada over here, muscling this rock into place. This rock right here is going to act as a peninsula that will set a point out into the pond. So she's gonna work back behind that to the right, and then I'll work back behind it from the left, creating this horseshoe shape, hooking us back into our cove area where our stream of waterfalls is going to come in right in through here. one of the rocks in the intake bay and we've got Chris over here doing some edges which means a couple things one is if we're working on edges it means this pond is pretty close to being finished through so we're gonna start rinsing this thing down we've got some dirt coming in fill this whole back edge in through here and get that intake bay rocked in and then we are going to start digging the wetland filter up in there the intake bay over here you can see Dan is kneeling on some aqua blocks so we've got six small aqua blocks in here we've got a pump vault right right there and we've got of course our skimmer back behind him which will really help with ease of maintenance and as far as collecting all that debris that's going to be deposited into this pond we love intake bays because they're like skimmers on steroids but what we've noticed that if they are not properly maintained all that debris that's supposed to circle in those intake bays doesn't get pulled out of there soon enough what will happen is it becomes waterlogged it'll fall to the bottom and it will clog those aqua blocks so anyways we just want to make sure that's a big reason why we are putting skimmers on to the intake bay areas is to have a debris collection area because everything's going to be drawn into that skimmer. But, and as you can see, leaves are falling. So we've got birch leaves, silver maples, all kinds of stuff. So there's going to be a lot of debris in this pond. There's a big reason why we put the skimmer on as well as the intake. So hope that makes sense. Stone. Now we've got the biofalls set. That's the 6000 series biofalls. You see Ryan and Chris is backfilling along the back side of it. Dan's going to scratch out right over there along that retaining wall and get our plumbing started. And then he's going to start digging this wetland filter up and through here. So a lot of this stuff will just end up being used just to feather all this berm out. This berm will come all the way out into here and then we'll just feather it into the landscape. The nice thing about having all this dirt and such a wide expanse is we can really feather that berm out as far back this way as we need to so that does a couple things for us one is that allows us to get rid of a lot of this dirt that's on the project without having to take anything out of here we're just simply displacing it into other areas what it also does is it makes that berm look very natural and subtle and not volcanic a lot of times the mistake that we see happen on projects is there's either too much rock and not enough dirt well actually that's really the main thing that we see a lot is just everything looks so volcanic and man-made the more dirt you can have 
have flanking the biofalls and the waterfall, the better and more natural it's going to look. So we just love being able to do that and really have the necessary resources at hand to be able to pull off such a natural looking waterfall.